kindly sit down. Thank you for your courtesy. His Excellency Rafael Harpas, Ambassador of Israel to the Philippines, Executive Secretary uh, Salvador Midaldia, Trade and Industry Secretary Ramon Lopez, and members of the Cabinet, Davos, Philippine Ambassador to Israel, Ataniel Imperial, Davos City, Sarah Zimmerman Duterte. Mama, you have to forgive her, she might be attending to her daughter. Our friends from the Philippine and Israel business community, other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I have a guide of what to talk about. Uh, it's a good one, but uh, may I just uh, say first uh, to the Israel people and the government, thank you for visit, uh, allowing us to visit in your, in your place and to see more of uh, well, you know, every dream of every Filipino, the middle class and those who can really afford, uh, it's, it's a kind of a built-in urging inside to visit the Holy Land. That's why you see many Filipinos, including my wife, uh, was here but uh, she's sick and uh, she was here again twice to, to seek the solace and sanctity of the place. So I'd like to thank uh, uh, the president and the prime minister for giving us uh, the invitation to visit you. Uh, no words are enough really to characterize our relations between Israel and the Philippines. Uh, uh, so much uh, goodness and goodwill uh, have been passed around throughout the years, and uh, we see that uh, we have the best of uh, relations between the two countries. There will never be time that the Philippines and Israel would have a conflict even in the space of hegemony of uh, uh, influence, geopolitics, simply because one is that we read the same Bible, we say the same prayer, and of course uh, our shared values. Uh, so much has been said about me and now about the criminals and uh, the drugs and the ISIS operating in my country. And of course, there's also the rampaging uh, uh, murderous uh, bandits that abound in Mindanao. I must have known that I'm a public uh, or I was a public prosecutor for nine years. I was doing trial work in court. Uh, and as a matter of fact, my favorite book is, uh, uh, I don't know if it's being used here, but it's called uh, Einstein, Goldstein, rather. And he was one of those uh, popular American Jew who wrote uh, that book by Goldstein, called the trial technique. It's about uh, court uh, strategy and practice. Uh, I, I, I do not want to, you to feel that uh, I am repeating a redundant uh, statement. But you know, uh, little as we are as a country, and however humble it may be, the Philippines, uh, 
Philippine Republic has stood by your side in your critical view. And in the same manner that you were around during the times of our despair and needs. Um, Rabbi was a shining example. I do not think that there is a secret there or that it should be hidden from the public. But I'd like to acknowledge, as I have acknowledged it everywhere, that the equipments that you lent us help the military of the Republic of the Philippines win the war against the ISIS in Marawi. As I have been telling before, you know, in front, I do not want to offend my military men. But I just quirk something. During my first days of my presidency, I called for a command conference. And everyone had his uh, time. The armed forces of the Philippines, so it's a spokesman. Then uh, the time for the police to render the report. And there was a summation of all the things that we had to do. But when my time came to speak, and I said, you know, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I do not mean to offend you, but you have failed to mention to me the dark clouds ahead. I see them looming in the horizon. And I said, uh, good afternoon, uh, Vice Mayor, your seat is here. So, may I introduce my daughter? She's a descendant of a Jew who were the, the ones who went to the Philippines to seek the sanctuary from the persecution in Europe. Her last name is uh, Mother's name is Elizabeth Zimmerman. So she is here. And she whispered to me, Is it possible for me to acquire dual citizenship? <laughs> with this I said, Of course, I, 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 maybe you would accommodate you, for indeed you are. Uh, so I said, That's a big dark clouds looming ahead. And I and he would ask me. It is a very interesting story. Uh, I know that you are here for designing, but uh, if you want to listen to me, this is how it worked. It played out. Indeed, uh, I said, there is this group, Abu Sayyaf. There are a bunch of bandits who know nothing but to kill people even after the ransoms were paid. And they would decapitate people on the capture in front of cameras. And I said, these are the people that the ISIS would go to and seek also the sanctuary. And be careful, for the first time I said, they will come. I was uh, observing the movements of uh, the, in this place, how they went ahead with Mosul, Aleppo, and all of these things. At one time, they were there, but it, it has been about so many years of fighting without a respite for the, to, to the good people of the Middle East, to those who do not want war. So it came to pass that they were there. And uh, the depredations uh, doubled. And this time they had the ideologues. And when a tribe, when uh, a politician or, or uh, a bandit, 
he used to, I don't, I don't know if he was the one who ran for office or lost. Uh, he was assigned as the, uh, forgot the name of, uh, the, but he was the chieftain that was selected by the ISIS to do the organization and to bring the, the ideology inside uh, Mindanao, an island in the Philippines. And at that time, I saw already from the reports that uh, the arms were being passed around, and we kept track of that. But uh, what we actually failed to appreciate, and I, uh, being the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Philippines, I have to assume that responsibility that there was quite a, a failure of intelligence. And that we saw, we failed to appreciate the ordinance that they were able to keep in the city. And it lasted for almost four months of fighting. And only because at times they prevailed because they were already occupying the buildings of that city, protected by the cement and iron bars. So the first day that the police went to the place to serve a warrant of arrest because of a drug case, they were met with resistance, a fierce one, uh, prompting the Philippine Marines to uh, go there and help. And on the second day of fighting, while they were crossing a bridge, every Marine officer was taken down by sniper fire. And so we were not able really to determine from where the sound came from and all of these things. And even the accuracy of our, uh, of, our, of, our, of our equipments, because we could not really pinpoint in the exact location. Uh, Israel came in, it helped. Uh, they were there, operated, and some lent us the, able to precisely to know where the, the shot came from, from what building and from what room. That is how accurate it is. So we're able to scan the buildings and if there is a fire, the blackboard that was being, has been recording the, the fighting would know that it came from that building. And so, Little by little, and at night, we had a vision, so we could tell them moving around. And we could fire with accuracy, even with our snipers. And uh, I don't know about uh, the United States. I do not have any, except that uh, there's uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, it's not easy to be a president of uh, a country who has so many million loose firearms in the hands of people who are not supposed to be in possession. And uh, I have to contend with so many troubles there and I'm sure that you have heard about human rights. You know, I am a lawyer. I was baptized. I am a Christian, and I believe in the value and sanctity of life. But for the life of me, I can never tolerate banditry, the uh, ISIS uh, thing of uh, just uh, killing people, children and all. Uh, I only kill criminals. 
And if you ask me now, we do, yes, I do. But, you know, when I was mayor, it was a troubled city. It was in Mindanao. The first thing I did after winning was that we are not in a position to be economically sound to build more roads and more bridges. The first thing that I have to do is to build a city that would be comfortable for everybody. When I said comfortable, they will be freed of the killings and uh, which uh, was ever present. We lose so three to four policemen and soldiers a day by assassination in the midst of the city. And your intelligence people know that because they were there also. So I said, I'm going to build a city. Do not destroy it. And for the drug people, do not kill our children because they are our only assets. We are not rich. When we grow old, I have to go to my daughter because we do not have properties to sell so that we can pay for the hospitals, for the oxygen, and for the antibiotics and all. We have to, but it's, I know it, God's will that uh, we are just migrants in Mindanao. We never expected this uh, kind of life. I come from a poor father. Because had, we, had it been otherwise, we would not have to transfer from the Visayas to Mindanao to seek the greener pasture. So it was the dream of my father that I carried along. So when I became mayor, I said, do not do anything, especially our children. Because until now, drug is really flooding the country. It's the Bambo Triad based somewhere there in the Triangle of Burma, Cambodia. They are the ones now running the show of drugs in Southeast Asia. Now, uh, cannabis, uh, uh, cocaine, is finding its way into our shores. And it is a commodity that is for the who can afford. It's quite expensive. But shabu is just a chemical. And you know what? One of the mixtures there is formalin to preserve the dead and uh, some water to manufacture the shabu. So, it is really uh, of uh, our national interest to protect uh, my young people. And when I became president, I said, do not destroy my country and do not destroy our young. Otherwise, we book kapot. You know, however or whatever the arguments of the human rights are, by count, by physical uh, surrender, they numbered about a million, although the original computation was three million. There are about, to me, three million drug addicts reduced to slavery who are now rendered inutile because their brains are wrapped up. And they cannot be productive citizens, and you have reduced them into slaves because they have to get the chemical called shabu every day of their lives, nothing more. And that is why I said, if you destroy my country, my God, I will kill you. And if you destroy my my, our, our daughters and sons. We are not rich. Some of us could barely send our children to school. I don't know why this is so, but God can answer that question. 
may be it's part of the universal equation of how things are. Nobody can explain that. And it's only when you die and begin to understand. When you travel the universe after and you soar into the place where God is, then maybe the answer is there. But when in the meantime, I cannot just sit there and pray all day. I pray and I said, go out. That is my order to the military and police. Go out. Destroy the apparatus. The organization. If you have to kill, by all means kill. And there's only one everywhere, the same philosophy, is that you can only kill if your life is also in danger. So if the enemy is want to kill you, then feel free to kill him first. It's just one squeeze of a trigger. But I do not go to my troops and say, be patient, wait for the idiot to draw his gun. Because between the drawing and the gun and pointing it at somebody is just a matter of seconds. The human rights people have brought me to ICC, and the problem, I said, I just kept quiet all along because uh, I was a prosecutor. I said, and I knew my law. Would you believe it? No lawyer, no lawyer at all, near or far from me, officially or privately, had the idea of what def my, my defense would be. So I just kept quiet. But when the time came for me to talk, I said, you know, you idiots there. You can never acquire jurisdiction over my person. Not in a million years. Why? Because they simply forgot. And that was really a blessing you know, in all democratic countries, we do not pass laws that are so brosa. We do not do it a decrease secretly. You publish a law that there is a law which says that it is wrong and this is the, your punishment. Without that, how can you now say that, oh no? Ignorance of the law excuses no one. Then the guy must realize that there is a law, but if you are ignorant of it, then there's no law at all because they failed to publish it in the official gazette. The Rome Statute talks about international court, talks about the office of prosecutors, and talks about the office of uh, the line agencies under their command. But in the Philippines, it is important that before a law becomes a law from the, uh, uh, the concurrence, we have to concur with the statute, with the agreement, you have to go to the president for a signature. Then the papers go to the Senate for concurrence. Then you send it back to me so that I can order the Bureau of Printing to print the law and publish it. What they did was after the signing of the agreement by the senators, because of their eagerness, they flew to Rome and attach the supposedly the law binding the Philippines now as a member. But I just kept quiet. You know, the, the, there are lawyers here. When I, in the morning when I was a prosecutor, when I look at the papers, the first thing that I would ask myself is, do this court 
have jurisdiction over the case. So what are the elements? Publication is very important. Without publication, our Supreme Court said there is no law at all. And so I was just letting them both. I said, go ahead. You criticize me. I said, ah, I just dismiss it with a nonchalant because they thought I was a madman. I was a despot. Well, I said, go ahead and investigate. And the time came that they said they would now publish it and uh, the, the indictment and they'd go to the UN. And I said, you know, you know, Lord, my countrymen, do not believe in those idiots. They're a bunch of ignorant people. And so that's what happened. You did not publish the law. So how do you suppose you can pr prosecute me? There is no law. Because if there is no publication, then the Constitution applies. In that document, the Constitution, which is binding to all, it is the Bible of uh, every community, international uh, countries who believe in democracy. You have rules, the Constitution, and it's a sacred one. In there it says that no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law nor shall any person be denied the protection of that constitution. So how would this apply to me? I am now being charged of violating human rights. But there is no such crime in the revised penal code words about what is extrajudicial killing. This murder, homicide, everything, but Extrajudicial killing is very, very foreign to us. Well, anyway, I said, in my case, that no person shall be deprived of life liberty without due process of law, nor shall any person be denied equal protection. What, how does it operate for me? Because they forgot to publish it or in their hurry, they just flew to Rome. We just wanted to go around and we were in a hurry there to, they, they just went ahead and appended. So in the process of hurrying up along the way, they forgot the publication. And therefore, to insist on indicting me, under the Trump statute would be now a violation of my constitutional right. Uh, if, if say that uh, they can, uh, we say now, uh, we, do, we, we withdrew. We did not, there was nothing to, with, to, to withdraw because in the first place, there was not even a law. Because the law has to be published so that people understand and know that there is a law. Otherwise, I can say, ignorance of that law would excuse you. It's always saying, when you go to another country, oh, well, you are a foreigner, sorry. But uh, ignorance of the law excuses no one. But if your laws require a publication and you did not, then that becomes a problem. Now, uh, how about the killing? Correct. I ordered. But who are the persons I ordered not to be killed? I said, destroy the apparatus of the organization. So when you say destroy to the military man, that is really to dismantle the, organ the crime organization. And if you try to resist and fight it out, then you're dead. 
then that's the long and short of it. How do you suppose uh, to a policeman would say, you destroy the apparatus of that gang they're operating somewhere? You have to go after them, arrest them, and if they resist, then you kill them. Especially when you are sure that your life in fulfilling your obligations as a police officer is put in peril. So that you might know because I, I feel that it's important for you guys, especially the lawyers, to know where I stand. And that is my stand. I never ordered any police operation or military maneuvers against the Rotary, the Lions International, or the Kiwanis. Never. I said criminal. I do not like criminals. Especially if you destroy my country because by flooding it, would have reduced my country to shambles. Well, there are so many critics you know, about the killer. I have a bowman. True. I was just a mayor. I was not a political figure in our country. I was just a mayor of a small city down south. If you look at the map, that's Mindanao. If you look at the map, your right hand is the east. From where you are, your left hand, left hand is the west. If you are in Thailand, then you go face north, same. So in my city, it's down south. I was just a small town mayor. And I was never able to separate my personality because I am not a split personality I never trans transform into something like a town mayor and being president. And so I have a bout month. I curse. I throw epithets uh, a lot when I'm, when I'm angry. And I said, they said that, you know, this Duterte is not a statesman. He should not be going to anywhere. He would uh, put us to shame. He talks like a, a, a gangster and he, he curses everybody. Correct. Because I never studied to be a statesman. There's no course as a statesman. <laughs> I studied law. I grew up in a place where there's just a lot of trouble until now, and our paradigm seems to be far different from the cultured ones in the, the, the especially the 400 of society, the elite. I, I do not, they are not my enemies, but I, I, I do not like, I do not mix with rich people. And the other ones are almost offended by my behavior. I said, I, 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 the, the one thing there is that I won the presidency. My, my vote was six million over the next opponent. How, you ask me, how, how did you manage to win? I'm really sorry. You have to ask uh, someone else. And even, I only had I, no backers, no senator was uh, helping me, nobody was uh, giving me money because uh, I was always fought. Number one is Rojas or, and Grace Pod, they would be uh, sometimes first, but I was always in, in the fort. So, well, how did, how did I, I don't know. But one thing is sure, 
if you really, if it is really needed by a country, they will forget money. Or they will get your money and forget you. <laughs> that is how when you go into a vote buying. Me, I had nothing. I had only five messages. And these are the ones now I'd like to talk to you about. It's hot here, like the Philippines. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I only had, during the presidential debates, which was uh, run nationally, during uh, the intermissions, I was the only one who had no uh, propaganda. I could not afford it. During our uh, several meetings in a debate nationwide, uh, in, during the intermissions, the, the propaganda of every candidate was there because of the money. Well, I had none, so I said, I just said, well, this is what I said to them. If God wants me to be president of this republic, I will be the president of this republic. <laughs> Believe me. You guys, when you go for the premier uh, or uh, president, uh, first, uh, do not forget to say in public, if God wants me to be president or prime minister of Israel, I will be. That's the only thing that I can say. But it was also the messaging. I have only five. Uh, this would apply to you, actually. One, I said, there will be no corruption. So I'm very strict about corruption. And even fired several of my con companions who were with me during the early days, in 1988, when I became mayor. They were with me. In the several elections, maybe nine, I never lost a single election. Then uh, I said to them, no corruption of any kind. Now, there are a lot of corruptions in the Philippines. True, but I'm trying my very best. I have fired several of my closest friends. I told my cabinet members not even a whiff of corruption. Then I said, I will fight drugs. Then I said, I will not dirty my hands with money in politics. The standing order to all of my cabinet members who are here is no transaction of any kind, any contract, any agreement between the Philippines and a private person, or even a, a, a government office or this government office, they will not reach my table. It begins and ends with the cabinet member. That is really how it is. So that in doing so, I tell everybody, if you are into business in the Philippines, there are rules to be followed. But uh, I'm going to make it simpler and sim simpler, uh, the rules, uh, when I go back. And I want it really to be graph free. And if there's any one of you here now, and I give you my guarantee, if any one of you here would do business in the Philippines and you are given a hard time especially if you are uh, being milked or extorted or being asked to even a piso. Tell me, I will grant you an audience even in the middle of the night and hear you out. And I guarantee you. <laughs> just remember the official with whom you are transacting. You name him, I will call him, 
and in front of me, I will say to you, slap him. <laughs> slap him twice on both cheeks. Because he is insulting you, he's insulting your character. And for me, he puts my country into shame. So they say that in front of jokes. No, I'm not. So if that person you're complaining about is found without a head, then that is your maybe guarantee that the next time this guy or the other guys will be. I have no compunction about. I'm quite uh, I'm fond of uh, slapping people in public. It does not make any effort. Unlike when you box a guy who sometimes hurt your slapping is just uh, So that's it. That's my guarantee. You invest, uh, and uh, pretty soon there'll be an office who will just, as I have said, I want this reiterated in front of everybody, and uh, even here, that when you file your application, you're given a list of all the things that you have to submit and the things that you have to do. Then. File it there in that office. We will hand carry it to the office where it's concerned. And we will tell you, you deal with this uh, person in that office. who's the one in charge of processing. If there's uh, a machinery that you'd want to import, you just use the regular channels. And if you want to participate in the build, 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 uh, I don't know if we still have the money, uh, but my transportation uh, secretary is here. Uh, Art Mindigo, you might be the one uh, chosen to build the train from here to, uh, to the Philippines. Uh, so if you have a, you want to have a Skyway, uh, across the uh, Indian, what's the genius route? Then he's the man. Uh, he's the valedictorian of my class in the law school. He's really good. Even we were students, even we were students, he was already a CEO of uh, a large shipping company. Doesn't have to steal. He has billions. He even financed my candidacy. And uh, we have also General Anyu. Uh, he's the, he was the former chief of staff. Uh, he just uh, resigned and uh, not retired. And I got him to be the Secretary of Interior and Local Governments. Uh, the police, uh, PNP is under him. Uh, but the national defense, I request uh, General Lorenzana. <laughs> it's like uh, he's a very simple man. He was also the valedictorian in his class. I don't know if he was the PMA valedictorian in the Philippine Military Academy. Next to him is uh, a seasoned politician who is uh, in charge of labor, uh, Silvestri Bellio. Uh, stand up. <laughs> he is fond of uh, not wearing socks. Uh, 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 I've been told that tell me when is, when is your next birthday and I will buy you a pair of good, uh, I have with me the DNR, uh, 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 
uh, the environment guy, uh, General Simato, also. Of, uh, He is no stranger. He's retired, but during his retirement days, he was also taken in by President Arroyo before to come here in the Middle East to manage the situation during the troubled uh, years. He went ahead because I told him, go ahead, because you know it with your fingertips, uh, the situation. And we had, I had a briefing last night. And so I have Secretary Major Dia, also from. Uh, and uh, uh, the Department of Trade and Industry, uh, Ramon Lopez, Secretary. Uh, good. So, as you can see, uh, those who are here are really, or our ambassador is here, uh, Lam Tony Lambino. He's uh, in charge of an economic zone. Uh, and then I have, uh, I, um, yeah, uh, I have my press secretary, uh, Roque, Secretary Roque. Obviously, you know that his hair is not true. And uh, beside him is Secretary Kusi, is the energy. <laughs> and I said there are two Filipinos there who have uh, Jewish blood. Uh, Senator Gordon. <laughs> he has a lineage of uh, a Jewish uh, uh, blood also. But in my family, it's uh, in Dai, my daughter. So these are the, the, the guys that you'd want to, or if you want uh, a nearer uh, connect, then you can ask. Uh, in Dai is uh, a dialect, which, uh, it's like uh, Mary, something like that. I mean, a lot of the, in Dai is when uh, you, you love your daughter, we call that Indai, it's Indai. Uh, but this is Sarah, Sarah Zimmerman Duterte. <laughs> Look at the size, like the, your soldier here, tall and, so that was the second. Corruption. The third is that I would not meddle for the life of me. I, I, I'm sure that the Israel is, whenever I talk to over the phone, I, I know that everybody is listening. And I would always tell the, the guy on the other line, uh, others, uh, at the end of the line, uh, I do not use cell phones to talk about state matters. It's always, but I do not call them. I don't even know the number. Uh, I want, I want very hard, I want it, uh, you to know that uh, I am uh, hard on this uh, rule of not using anything except uh, uh, the, if India is not here, then I can tell you the guys on the other end of the line. It's always a promiscuous and lascivious conversation. It's always with a lady. Uh, then I said, Dick, why don't you get a, pull a chair and mopo on a little. Senator has been, uh, Gordon has been uh, the mayor of Longapo City. Uh, his father was also the mayor before. He has been elected for several years. And uh, for senator, this is this. I don't know how many times have you been elected senator, Dick? Four? Twice. 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 Secretary of Tourism and SBA 
Yeah. Okay. So, you have uh, Senator Gordon. Now, I... The third is that, uh, I said, I would talk to the enemies of the state. Make peace with them if possible. I've been talking to Murad, the MILF head of a revolutionary group, a large one in Mindanao. And they have, uh, 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 the MILF itself agreed to talk to us and uh, participate in amending the Constitution, if it's possible, uh, from unitary to federal type, and this will be the mechanism where we can fit in what we have agreed upon into some of the regional uh, structures and changes that would be needed, including the uh, finance. The other large group is uh, Miswari. He has kept his faith as a Filipino. Uh, he doesn't want to fight and is waiting for my cue. And I've been discussing this with my military men and uh, he's asking for something which I have to discuss with the Filipino people. Yet, as yet. So, the communist uh, Maria Sison, the head, uh, I, I don't think I can agree on him on any point because he has so many demands. He distributed in the so many issues that they presented uh, several uh, about uh, governance, taxation, and all. But if you sum it up, it would end like they are demanding a coalition government. I cannot, I said, agree with you because I cannot give you what I do not know. Uh, and that is a coalition government which is not uh, simply allowed. And if I do it, it will be military, we, we will also kill me because my soldiers are uh, into the ways of democracy and communism is not acceptable to almost all of the people. They are just a minority, but they are waging a war there. And what is sad is that uh, for the many times that I, you should know this because uh, some of the CIA guys are here. I know. And um, so, you know, the Communist Party of the Philippines has fallen into a trap of, you know, destroying itself. The leaders are aging and they are asking for more than what we can really give them. And I said, I cannot have uh, that power. It belongs to the Filipino people, especially in amending the Constitution. So we have this war going on. And they are the ones that are the loudest in shouting violation of human rights. They are rebelling and their target is to overthrow the government. That is why they are the Communist Party of the Philippines. The problem is uh, they are the ones very loud. I lose something like three to four policemen a day to the drug syndicates all over the country. As I have said, Bambo Triad is now controlling Southeast Asia's commerce of uh, drugs. Mexico is coming in, Senulosa, with cocaine and hashes and all. They have mastered the art of the, uh, the container ships that go around the world. And you can find them in the compartment or where they, they would heat it or place it there and place some many things that are not really uh, of no consequence, but that they contain drugs. Be careful because they're using 
Senor Rosa is, is using the worldwide uh, container uh, wherever they travel and wherever they, they go to, to any country. So we have to, we have the NPAs, we have the Muslim insurgency and the drugs, but the, the most problematic also is uh, uh, the, the Filipinos itself. Uh, there's the, you, you cannot do good, it's always wrong. And so we'll just have to navigate uh, where uh, uh, democracy allows us a space to work uh, and uh, produce results. So that is how it is done. Then uh, I said that uh, I will not talk to the NPAs anymore. Maybe we'll have to fight. What is really painful to me? And I would like to express this so that America will realize that long before I became president, we ordered 23,000 pieces of uh, M16s because it was needed by the police. And we were uh, conscious ever of the abruing trouble in Marawi. And of course, they would say, yes, you have so many weapons. Correct. And, but those were the weapons that were bought by Marcos during the early years of the Black Shirt Revolution. And they were used extensively during the wars. And they are still the ones that are being uh, used by the police in some parts of my country. Sometimes the vault flies out or uh, the, the, the barrel simply melts. There is no more accuracy because there is no rifling. With so many thousands uh, going out of the barrel, a heated one, they lose the rifling inside, which gives it the momentum for accuracy. As it travels along the open space, it, it is continually making a... So we ordered, and America, agreed, but on last minute, some American legislators, I think senator or congressman, two of them, one senator and one congressman, spoke out against the, uh, this uh, export of these rifles to replace the old ones. You know, I said, you know, America, in my speech, one day you will realize that you are far more worse ten times over than our problem on its drug. Look at, at America now. So we ordered that for the police, in addition to the fact that there were already some rumblings in the Marawi area in Mindanao. But at the last minute, they said, we cannot give it to you because of one or two congressmen who spoke against it. So we needed, we needed those rifles. Uh, the need was great because there was already fighting somewhere in Mindanao. And as a matter of fact, when I realized that I could not get one, even, I was forced to go to, not really forced, but it was a choice. But to no other reason, I was forced to, to go to China. So I talked with uh, Mr. Xi Jinping, and he was very honest. He's good. He can, be, he can talk. He can communicate. And I said, uh, I have a claim against you. I have a claim, I have, I have a claim against China for occupying the whole of the China Sea. So this is the first time that a country has opted to claim an ocean, not just that the territorial limits of 12 miles from the shores or the economic zones of 200 years. So, but I come here not to quarrel, but to ask for your help. 
we can talk about this. Uh, in, uh, but I said, we will talk about this during my term. But uh, for now, I said, uh, I'd like to buy some uh, firearms, I mean, uh, the M16s, if you have. And he said, no, no problem. Uh, I can give it to you free. So he gave me some rifles. Then still, because we are only given so much, we cannot ask for more because it was gratis. I had to go to Russia. It was in Russia. When I was in Russia, that was the day that Marawi fighting broke out. I said, were it not for the help of Israel and some uh, other countries, Indonesia. I don't know about America. I never ask. We have this, uh, not, not a love-hate relationship, but I just don't feel like talking to them. Uh, and I realize my military is really pro-American. You know why? Every graduate from the Philippine Military Academy, especially if you are bright, the, this uh, three generals here went to America to study at one time during their careers. I am very sure Roy Simato went there. John Anions went there also. So they are more attuned to the American way and even in the handling of weapons. So I said, maintain your friendship. Uh, me, just leave me alone. I will not uh, fight America too powerful, but uh, I have a, a deep sin sentiment. I, I, I cannot, if you are a CIA, can you, re can you reach your right hand, please? <laughs> Nobody is a uh, CIA. I, I, I want to talk, uh, to talk to you after this. <laughs> you know, I said, however humble and little my country is, I am the head of state. Now, just because you are the president of the United States, you just cannot talk about me, the president of the Philippines. And in a press briefing, you criticize me. And you say in public, um, said the Saturday, like it to know that you are, uh, oh, it's not acceptable, you know, to uh, what you're doing in your country. And, uh, you know, simply it's not uh, the way you, how, how things are done, and blah, 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 blah. So I said, and, uh, the media asked me, you were berated by Mr. Obama, or the President of America. Really? What did he say? Oh, well, it's a lot to, uh, it, he has it, a strong drawl in his tongue not even uh, make sure what it is, but you have to sort it out what he said. Uh, so you just tell him, you can go to hell, Obama. You're a son of a bitch. <laughs> just because uh, we're in, you have no right to do that. If you have something against me, go to the United Nations and file the case. Why, why do you have to? blot it out in the open, in a press briefing. I am not a, a, a county or a mayor here or a, a janitor of White House. You do not do it fast. That's what I said. You know, then came Trump. He calls me, I, mean, I called him, I said, to congratulate. Every head of state would always do that. I called him, I said, congratulations, uh, Mr. Trump, uh, on your, oh, is this the president of the free? Yes, sir. Oh, I'd like to invite you to visit me in here in America. You should come here, we could talk, so if I have the time, Mr. President, but you know, I'm, I run a very tight schedule. Oh, well, maybe, but, uh, You've heard that I'm going to the Philippines. Yes, 
I'm waiting at the great expectations. So he comes to my country, he goes public, he says, Oh, Rodrigo, you are my man here. I like what you're doing. Uh, you're doing a fine job. Killing teeth. He never said He just said that you're doing fine. And he even said, uh, I, will, I, I might follow you. <laughs> you follow, follow me and you. So, um, Mr. CIA, <laughs> I'm here, you're after my neck. What are the values that I would? enjoy to share with you. Here's one president berating me and another one praising me. So you're bad, but Mr. Trump says, oh, you're good, you're my friend. Um, you're doing fine. Oh, really, sir? Yes. You go to America and uh, I'm inviting you. If I have the time, Mr. President, I'd go. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you are in my shoes, what is there to learn or to follow? If it's values, well, you will be able to values passed from generation to generation. That is why I said, Nobody believes those who do not believe in God. It's uh, our concept of God uh, comes from our parents, from, uh, from the day we were born. So, but there are kind of values that are really very conflicting. So in the end, I said to the media, but Mr. Duterte, you have to uh, one pressing you and one uh, criticizing you, what would it be? And I said, I really do not know, but I'd like to sing a song for you. Who what is that? And I said, where do we go from here? <laughs> yeah. You are friends of America, I know. Most of us are friends of uh, the old days. Trump is my idol. Why? Because he, say, uh, he walks the talks. When he says that I will do this, uh, even how, does not care. So that's the kind of uh, thing that I also want. I do not care. I said, if, you do, if I say that this is the way to do it, then this is the way to do it. It has no personal agenda, it has nothing there, except that uh, the greater interest of the nation says that we have to be here. That's all. That is why uh, if you happen to invest, you can rock to Mon, and uh, if it's defense, uh, then uh, Secretary Lorenzana will talk to you. Uh, we are in the process of acquiring some little equipments. Uh, and this is what I said, and I'll tell you in public. I have ordered the military and the police that when it comes to intelligence equipments, you only buy do not go for the lowest bid. That's bullshit. You buy from something, eh? buy somebody else. Then. No, everybody would be listening. It's 4.10. Next event is 4.30. <laughs> uh, Just tell them that I am good until 9 o'clock tonight. <laughs> no problem. 
I have a crowd here listening to me. So, <laughs> and clapping their hands every sentence. <laughs> Can you beat that? She's my police aide. She is half uh, Romanian, half uh, Philippine. I, uh, I'm one of the sponsors of her, her wedding. She's good. So that's it. Uh, I know that uh, you are for the return of your investments. And if, if you do not uh, dream of profits, then do not go into business. And that I said, you're, uh, you're making profits. Of course. If you are into business, the thing is that you have to get profits or not. Why go into that uh, kind of activity? Second, you want it uh, uh, graph free. Third, easy to run your papers. And I said, if you do are not uh, familiar, just uh, submit to me your application uh, with uh, a member of your, not really the ambassador, yeah, the commercial attaché would make representation. And we will get your papers and I will file it to the appropriate cabinet uh, person. And I said, uh, no, no asking, no nothing. You, you import your machines. Just pay the dues, and that is all there is to it. I have a very, it's not quite uh, good yet for uh, some of my police, but General Anyo promised us that he will uh, also defend them uh, from uh, going around. The thing really is, I do not want corruption. Uh, for the 23 years that I was mayor of Dabao City, uh, of course, I, I never lost an election, actually, until I became Kong, Kong, I was also a congressman. Then, because of the term limits, I could not run for the fourth time. I asked my daughter, Sarah, who is also a lawyer, to ask her to run for the mayorship, and I settled for the vice mayor position. And after that, uh, uh, I ran again. She took a, a long uh, respite, but uh, when the issue of the presidency cropped up, I, I said to her, I will never, never, never leave Davao with, uh, in the hands of somebody else. Took me years to make what Davao is today. You can all go to Davao and see for yourself. It would have wanted uh, the entire country to be like Davao. Took me years to do it. I said I've been mayor for 23 years. And then along the way, I fulfilled my promise to the people to make Dabao city that is comfortable for everybody. Now, in the, by and large, the, the larger picture is the country. Uh, I still have about three more years to do it. I'd be happy if uh, I could uh, just eradicate uh, crime, drugs, and corruption. And I've been telling people whenever I, in the Philippines, we can never have a country that is progressive and developed until we have fulfilled two conditions. You have to stop graft and corruption. There is corruption everywhere. There is graft everywhere. No? We will never ri rise. Second is we have to have law and order. That has been the anchor of uh, how I built my city now. Uh, it was hit, uh, it was uh, it had a growth rate of two, three percent when I first became mayor. Davao is hitting nine growth rate. 
very high, very the highest of all the country. But Davao City is quite just like here. At uh, Manila is very uh, well, it's an open city for you enjoy. But in Davao, when I was mayor, the first time I said, no more firecrackers, no more smoking, uh, I, no more drinking, just to be good now. It's, uh, the limit was two o'clock. When I became mayor, I said, one o'clock because uh, you have to go home and sleep. Here comes this uh, lady. He reduced it further. It's 12 o'clock. So 12 o'clock in Davao is like uh, a Holy Friday for the Christians. The, you do not see anybody walking the streets. I'm telling you the truth. You, you can ask your friends to take a footage with your cameras. See how Davo is. In daytime, at the latter, we have hit about two million population. But at night time, people have become used to just being there and disciplined. Well, in, in, the, in the early years, we had to, just like Dick Gordon is very strict, you have to force it down the throat of the people. This is to our national interest. If we don't, then do not blame me. So I said, this will be it. And so, but Davao remains to be a target of the ISIS. As a matter of fact, uh, in the previous years, the cathedral church was bombed twice. In the, the airport and the, the wharf suffered and uh, during her term the night market was also so we, were, we were able to manage and so that uh, was really very important to us is crime crime detection and cr prevention of crime because uh, these things are very important and very crucial to our the maintenance of law and order so I am here to invite you. Davao is uh, progressing a lot. Uh, it's just maintained its uh, 6% despite of the trouble, economic uh, growth. And if you want to participate, especially in field of uh, whatever, agriculture, uh, it's also one, one promising. Our weakest link, actually, economically, is the agricultural sector. And we can learn much about this from your government, courtesy of your citizens. So we're here to ask for help and to invite you to join us in nation building. Uh, you won't have a hard time, I know, because uh, we, we almost share the same all, as a matter of fact, in terms of values, in terms of uh, our paradigm, in terms of, uh, where it would, do not believe in that uh, thing that I'm there to be a dictator. I will go down. I will go down the day my term ends. I will step down. I said, I even offered to the military. There was this case about corruption also in the military. I was fed up. So I said, you know, guys, I'm tired. I'm ready to go down. If you want me, if you don't believe in me, then find another leader to follow. Well, what's my purpose here of standing if nobody pays attention to me? And so uh, I'm willing, if you guys think that uh, you have another leader in mind, tell me. Problem is, uh, there's a constitutional succession. I cannot talk about uh, the vice president, but certainly I, I would prefer that uh, 
something, if I go out, something more attuned with the, you know, the ways of human frailty and human greed and uh, the, the tendency of people to find easier route than follow the normal course of incorrect things. So we have a share of that also. Me, I have my faults, plenty. I have my share of, but never, in all those years that I've been in public office, when I was a prosecutor, when I was mayor, vice mayor, congressman, uh, it was never a, a question or issue of money. More of, more of my said that they are, uh, the criminals are uh, being killed, but I have not, for the life of me, ordered the killing of a particular person. If you happen to be there, sorry. If you are into drugs, sorry. That, 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 that's your fault, you ask for it. So my guarantee really is my word. And if you go there, and if you want a comfortable, uh, maybe beginning, just tell me. I will husband it, uh, your project, whatever it is. There will be no corruption. There will be no harassment, no nothing. It's an ordinary day-to-day -day government uh, business that you have to follow. And if you can do that, uh, and if you go there, tell me. We would be happy, uh, somebody like you, gentlemen and ladies, doing business in my city, contributing to nation building of the Republic of the Philippines. Thank you and good afternoon.